we got mics. We're good to go, mics. All right, rock and roll. And then we have to tear down and become a radio, sh ra I mean, a, a phoner for one guest. All right, stand by. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Neil Haley Show. I'm the host of the show, Neil Haley. You can go to my website, totaltutor.net, for more information. Uh, Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook. LinkedIn, Neil Haley, Instagram, Total Tutor, Pinterest, Neil Haley, Google Plus, and also on Periscope at Total Tutor. And uh, love television. It's a fun thing, and uh, taping about five weeks uh, this month, next month, I don't know. We'll never know, because I always like to top things. Uh, that's the biggest thing. It was interesting. I had a conversation today with a celebrity. It's going to be my client for social media and branding, and he had to mention my story, and he was a WCW tag team champion, hardcore champion WWE, and we had a conversation last night, and we put some on Facebook. So you never know my days, but you got to follow me in all those places to find out what's going on. And I'm excited to welcome my co-host, WPL Hall of Famer, UNLV running rep, Coach Karen Hall. Yes. Coach, we could have about 20 different interviews with all the different things she's done, and, uh, and she's so humble, we hear the other stories. But I know that our guest, and interesting, when I talk about Vincentian Academy and right. talk about the, how great of a school it is and yes. academics and athletics our guest today is a very interesting guest for sure Go ahead yeah well neil some. you know we've had some great people on and today our guest coach von Moncrief, head mm -hmm. coach head girls basketball coach of Vincentian academy tremendous success and we'll get to that story mm -hmm. so coach Moncrief, welcome to the show all right thanks for having me i really appreciate it good well we're yeah. going to dive right into it uh okay. you know we're going to start at your what's your robert morris university days um, your basketball. So just talk about how you found yourself on the men's basketball team. Yeah, um, after graduating from um, Cali County a Community College in Kansas, where I played two years there, um, I was looking where to go next. Um, so, at, so at the time, Robert Morris had one of the best sports management programs in the country. Okay. Um, so I called Coach Schmidt, said I was interested in coming to Robert Morris. You know, would I have a chance to walk on? He said, you have a chance. So uh, once I got there, tried it out and you know, made a team. What's your mindset as a walk-on? You're not scholarship. I mean, yeah. you're not, you know, this is, uh, there's a little difference. What was your mindset? Uh, just to prove myself that I can do it, you know, right. and pr prove myself to the players that, you know, even though I'm not on scholarship, you know, I'm just as good as exactly. you are and can compete at that level. So how was Robert Morris in your days playing there? Well, we were okay. We are still, you know, kind of rebuilding, you know, new coach coming in. Uh, so we did pretty good, you know. Did you guys win the the conference? No, we didn't. Yeah. yeah. So it just came up. It goes back and forth. But you always yeah. compete every we, year. You always like. compete. Yeah. Coach Smith was a really good coach and tough coach. So um, he made sure that um, we were always competing. You know, and ready to play. Do you keep around the program at all? Talking to them at all? The Robert Morris, especially when they were starting mm -hmm. to win again. Uh, not as so. much as I should. You know, um, I go up there every year to you know speak at like the sports management conference. Uh -huh. But I haven't been directly you know in touch with the team, the men's team, in a while. Yeah, yeah. I am shocked at what happened to them. Tell me what happened and how they're uh, so good. They almost beat a major Division One school, and then yeah. the year later, and then the year before yeah. that, they upset in the NIT. They upset Kentucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's happened to the program? I just think it's you know good young coaching. You know, coming in there. No, but what about this year? Like this year, I, I don't um, have a, how could you just drop so quickly when they had a good coach and everything? Uh, it's injuries or what happened? Injuries part of it, um, new kids coming in, getting acclimated to your system. You know, I know some of the kids that are playing are young and going from high school playing against, you know, boys against men is a, is a big difference, you know. So okay. um, I think they're going to be fine. You know, they got a really good coach, good program, so they'll bounce back. Okay. So yeah. you follow them still, even though you're yeah, not in touch yeah, with them. Yeah, yeah, Cheer on Robert Morris, especially you were probably proud of them last year. Oh yeah, yes sir, yes sir. Proud of that Robert Morris jersey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah represent Robert Morris men's and women's program. Of course, you know, okay. yeah, absolutely. You have to talk about that. So, yeah. uh, coach, I know has the next question, but I would probably yeah. go into right. when you coach women's basketball. It's very difficult, different to see this, and and I think that it's great to see. That we, I'd love to see it both ways. Mm -hmm. Like I, um, so would I. So I would like to see more women coach men's yes. basketball, and it's not happening yet. Uh, again, and I think that's the big thing. But you transitioning into coaching girls basketball, how did that happen? Um, after I graduated college, um, I wanted to coach. I so saw I interviewed for a lot of men's mm -hmm. boys jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I had interviews, but nobody would hire me. You know, so I sent my resume for one girls job. They brought me on the interview and they hired me, you know, so ever since then, uh, I've been on the girls' side of basketball. So you learned from the assistants, being an assistant coach, how to coach 
girls' basketball. Yeah. The differences of men's basketball, men, boys' and girls' basketball is a lot diff it's different in certain ways. Yeah, yeah, I learned from um, the coaches I worked under, plus the coaches I played under. You know, I took the good things they did and the bad things and kind of formed my own philosophy. So when I became a head coach, I'll be ready to go, you know, and have my philosophy in place. You know, working basketball camps, that's a lot of play places where yeah. people learn how to coach. They watch uh, individuals, get a chance to talk to them. Was that also in the midst of your route? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I did on my internship with Five Star Basketball uh -huh. Camp with Robert Morris, and um, met a lot of great, you know, players, you know, mm -hmm. college players, NBA players, coaches. Um, great opportunity to network. You get to pick their brain mm -hmm. to kind of see, you know, what's coaching like, and mm -hmm. um, it was a great opportunity, you know, for me to have that internship with Five Star. That's great. Yeah. So you you have the internship. You get your first girls job just like that. Couldn't yeah. get a boys job. Couldn't get a boys job. But you get one just like that. Yeah. So. You're an assistant. Mm -hmm. How long or short was your days as an assistant on the bench? Uh, I spent. And what did you learn? I spent, I think, two, two or three years at Lafayette as assistant coach. One year assistant coach at Vincentian Academy. Um, I just learned that, you know, as assistant coach, you know, um, you want to be loyal to your head coach. Um, you want to be, right. you know, good skills teacher. Whatever the head coach right. wants you to do, you got to be able to do it. Whether it's work with the guards, work with the post. Uh -huh. A lot of game planning, you know, you know, just kind of whatever the head coach don't have time for or really don't want to do. Yeah, yeah. I, said, I said the coach has to do it. He yeah, said it was a smile. yeah. So I had to, you know, learn. But just the head coaches I worked under, they were really good. You know, they let they allowed me to be myself um, and coach the way I know how to coach. So I wasn't a puppet or anything. They let me right. kind of develop under them. And coaching girls basketball, what do you see the difference between girls and boys basketball? Uh, I like it a lot, actually. I think um, girls, are they listen better than the boys do. Yes. Um, I think they have a better skill set because they're not a as athletic as the boys. Yes. Um, you know, I think, you know, coaching, you know, women's basketball it makes you a better coach because, you know, a lot of female, a lot of the girls are the more team oriented, yes. you know, where the guys is more of isolation. You got yeah. two guys you can kind of isolate. Right. Um, only bad thing with girls when they get mad with each other, they hold grudges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but other than that, you know, I, I enjoy girls basketball. It's less political. Um, you know, I wish it would get the attention that, you know, men's basketball gets, you know, because I think there's a lot of great mm -hmm. you know, girls players, a lot of great, you know, coaches out right. there. Um, and, you know, I'm going to do my best to help the girls game out because I think it's very exciting. And um, and it's fun to watch. So you're promoting us very well. So mm -hmm. from thank where you. I sit, we thank you. Yeah. So you know another difference. Um, having I've coached both men and women. Um, talk about the meshing of personalities because yeah. guys just roll the ball out. Yeah. Okay, yes. girls, but coach. The, can you talk about yeah. that side of? Coaching girls. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm a counselor more than a coach. Yeah. Sure. Um, but, you know, it, like I said, the girls listen. Once they yeah. learn that you care about them mm -hmm. and, okay. and you, you care more than about them, yes. more than just basketball, Absolutely. they're willing to warm through the wall for you. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost you got to prove yourself first to them. Um, so once you prove that, you know, it, you, he knows what he's talking about or he or she knows what she's mm -hmm. talking about, mm -hmm. that coach really cares about me more than just the sport. Um, they're willing to listen. They're willing to, you know, they're very loyal, you know, to right. the coach and to the program, and um, they'll do whatever it takes to, to you know, to win because they're competitors. They're very competitive, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I like that part about it. Does it help you with some of the other coaches that are in your league that you play college basketball? That you you were at the next level, not just high school, and understand the game a little bit more in certain ways because of, you know, the fundamentals yeah. change yeah. from high school to college. I played one college year at Division. Western Maryland, mm -hmm. and it was a completely different, the skill set, the way they taught you how to play, yeah. the people who they've worked under. I mean, I, I want to go back now into the Western Maryland days and think about my coach who uh, worked, knew Krzyzewski, knew a lot of what Krzyzewski did. So you don't see that in the high school game. Mm -hmm. So do the girls see that respect factor and understanding that you did play at the next level in, in college and understand specifically enough the way to teach them compared to maybe how they were taught playing in middle school and stuff like that coming to Vince Nunchin? Yeah, yeah, especially with the girls that want to go play at the next level. You yeah. know, um, they always seek advice, you know, what is right. it like at the next level, whether it's Division two, Division three, NAIA, Division right. one. Um, but even the kids that don't want to play in college, just having that, you know, that background of playing in college, having, you know, you know, just going through that experience, it's the good and bad, right. has allowed me to be a better coach, you know, learn some things and to help them out.
Um, so I think it helps out a lot, especially those young ladies that want to go on to play at the next level. I can kind of help them and guide them through the process. So AAUs, mm -hmm. you know, we're still in that high school in the Amateur Athletic Union. It's just massive around the country. Yeah, yeah. And so before you or during your coaching, early coaching days, mm -hmm. were you already on track with this AAU? Were you already coaching AAU? Yeah, I was, I was coaching AAU. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you're still involved? I'm still involved, yeah, with uh, Crons Basketball. Okay, so yeah. your involvement means what? Uh, I'm a director of the Boys and Girls um, Boys and, Boys and Girls of Crons Basketball Club, um, so I'm director of both of those, and um, I have one team that I coach on the girls' side. So mm -hmm. what age group? What age group? 10th uh, and 11th grade. Mm -hmm. Recruit yeah. girls from all over, or how do you attract your girls to your AAU yeah, program? We have, we have girls from all over. Um, like you said, AAU is very visible now, mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times the parents or the players go to the website. Mm -hmm. um, you promote your tryouts, um, and every club offers different things. Um, so I think, you know, whatever the player's looking to get out right. of the club, um, I think that's how they kind of form the, what club they want to play for. Very interesting. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, perceptions about mm -hmm. AAU. I mean, you are in it. Mm -hmm. um, so the, and I'm sure there's benefits and disadvantages. So yeah, right. from that side of AAU, if you could be a little exactly. objective at this moment, yeah. what do you see? I think um, there's a lot of, you need to do your homework as a parent and as a player. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of people out there that just want to make the money and really don't care right. about the, the player uh, or the parents. You know, mm -hmm. they're trying to make a name for themselves um, by using the players. You know, I made this player, this player went to that college. Mm -hmm. And in reality, we don't put players in college. They, their hard work put right. themselves in college. Right. Um, I honestly think, you know, especially at the high school level, if early mm -hmm. on, if, if young grade school and middle school, if you want to play to develop skills or whatever, right. Um, at the high school level, I think if you don't want to play in college, you shouldn't play AAU. Okay. You know, because wow. cause I think that it's more about the exposure, you know, then. Um, if you just want to become a better basketball player, work out, hire a trainer. But I think at the high school level, it if should be for those. Yeah, if you want to play in college. That's why I play AAU. Yeah. And yeah. you don't see that, all of them playing mm -hmm. in AAU. Or no, no, not at all. A lot of mm -hmm. girls or any boys, they want to play because their friends yeah. are playing, you know. And I think that. Um, that's why a lot of it's watered down, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that, you know, you know, you can't force anyone to do anything, but I think it's AAU, especially the high school level, is meant for those kids who really want to play at the next level because due to the NCAA rules and everything, right. you only really could be seen certain times of the year. Okay, yeah. so when we get back, more with Coach Ron Mo Moncrief mm -hmm. and uh, Coach Karen Hall as we're talking Vincentian Academy basketball, we're talking about AAU, all those things on the Neil Haley Show. You're watching the Neil Haley Show. When we get back, more great, interesting talk. We'll be back in just a moment. And for those of you in Bethel Park that don't know me, I am Mr. Bold, one of the many stars here at Bethel Park TV, Channel 7. I hope that the folks in Bethel Park understand what we have here in the way of BPTV, the asset that the television station, the public television station is to the community of Bethel Park. For Mr. Bold personally, one of the things that I would like to do, and I've talked to Dave about this, is a show gearing itself towards veterans. And I would throw out an invitation to the veterans in our audience here in Bethel Park or around the South Hills. If you want to contact Dave Cable here at the station and let them know that you would be willing to share your experiences, especially the World War II veterans who are losing here at an alarming rate and pretty soon there's not going to be many of them left. I would love to get them on TV if they would be willing and interview them. We're back to the Neil Haley Show on the Toll Education Network. Again, tolltutor.net for more information. Twitter, Toll Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley, Instagram, Toll Tutor, Pinterest, Neil Haley, Google Plus, also Periscope at Toll Tutor. And what's very, very interesting is the next time I'm in the studio, there could be a change of all this because I'm going to be separating the two websites. Stay tuned. But if you follow me, you'll know what's going on. And again, I'm with Coach Ron Moncrief of Vincentian Academy Ladies, Lady Royals and really mm -hmm. interested in discussion how you got involved, but I just really believe you respect coaches a lot more how far they've gone. Mm -hmm. It's like experts in anything. Uh, what have you done 
to, to be able to teach this. Yeah. That's really helps in a lot of ways, and that's what you see. But you talked about your management, your major at Robert Morris. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You, co you coach basketball. What, what do you do also? Um, I'm the athletic director um, at Ascension Academy. Oh, you're the athletic director? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so stay busy all the time. How long have you been the athletic director? Uh, this is my first year as the head, head athletic director. Okay. I spent two years as assistant athletic director. Okay, yeah. interesting. So you're involved with all the sports. All the sports. So probably yes, I start naming kids that I tutor <laughs> that, that are basketball. You'd say, oh, I know yeah, who they are yeah. and stuff like that. So, yes, sir. So your days are at Vincentian. So let's take the AD role. Mm -hmm. Something that, that's why you chose Robert Morse, right? You mm -hmm. want to be a top-notch AD. So you see yourself going to the next level, meaning college, for an for, athletic director at one point in time. Uh, I think if I was to go to the college level, it would be more on the coaching side. You know, really? I, I enjoy being athletic director, but my passion is really basketball. So if I think if, if I did make that jump to the next level, I think it would be more on the coaching side with basketball. So in AD in high school, is that is the major you chose at Ron Morris mm -hmm. is related to the athletic director? Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. It seems like you like coaching better. Oh, yeah, I love coaching. I mean, it's just... You probably wouldn't have thought that when you were going for AD. Uh, right? no. I mean, yeah, AD, I mean, it's almost like coaching because you have your, yeah. your coaches mm -hmm. and you're responsible for everything and you want all your, your programs to be successful under you. Um, so it's almost like coaching, but um, it's just a little bit different, you know, right. being in a competitive atmosphere, actually being on the sideline with the, with the girls, mm -hmm. and it's just something about coaching that uh, I'm a competitive person and I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you sat um, uh, in the assistant coaches mm -hmm. chair, and then you moved to the head chair. Yeah. And that head chair is a bit hotter <laughs> so, than the uh, it's a lot hotter. chair. <laughs> so, if you can put together um, the head job, mm -hmm. being the head, and the AD, because that's a lot of leadership, a lot right. of responsibility. Yeah. Can you talk to us on that level first, and then we'll come back to the actual on court stuff. Yeah, um, as far as, you know, I read my Bible and pray every day, you know, mm -hmm. um, for leadership, you know, to have help God guide me through the day. Because yeah. um, you have to make a lot of decisions. Mm -hmm. A lot of decisions just, you know, top of the fly, things right. just come up, you know. Especially being an AD, you have mm -hmm. a plan, you have you want to get this done today, mm -hmm. then something else pops up, yeah. you right. know. So you have to be adapt adaptable and, um, and remain calm and just get it done, you know. Right. Um, so I think leadership, you know, I'm really big on serving leadership. Mm -hmm. and I feel like, you know, in order to be a good leader and get people to follow mm -hmm. you, sometimes you got to serve them, in, you know. And um, that's what I try to do with my AD job. So you have a lot of par parents are different today. Oh, yes. So, oh, so he agrees. <laughs> They're way different. So how does that, um, your manager style, your leadership yes. style, how do you manage the parents? Because uh, mm -hmm. the, the um, school challenge can be challenging. I don't think they really can be managed. No, you know, can. I mean, yeah. and honestly, you know, with my jobs, I'm there for the kids. And, yes. and I just try to, you know, focus on that and make sure they're right. in, a, in a good environment, a safe okay. environment. You know, from a parent standpoint, no matter what decision I make, whether AD or coach, I'm going to please some. And right. I want to upset some, you know, because you can't make everyone happy. Sure. So my main focus is doing right by each and every kid in the okay. school, you know. And that's what, just control what I can control. Because yeah. the parents, you can't control them. And once you try to start, it's yeah. just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you're talking, you're talking an academy where it's not yeah. like you're an AD of a public school. Mm. Yeah. It's a different story, isn't yeah, it's it? A different it's story. a lot more pleasing, a lot more having to compromise yeah. Yeah. than if you're an AD yeah, public school. I mean, it's such a small school. Everybody knows everybody, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so it's like, you know, a close-knit, you know, group. How has the role been becoming an, a full-time AD? I mean, not not an assistant, but now the AD of mm -hmm. the school. How's that changed work-wise for you? Amount of yeah. different stresses, different things than when you were the assistant? Yeah, a lot of long hours. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, um, the work's not hard work, but it's lo long work. You yeah. know, you go there in the morning, you probably won't get home until late at night. Um, uh, it's just a lot more to do, a lot more scheduling. You know, it's a lot of little work that you have to do on a daily events basis. You attend to yeah. attend yeah. as well, not yeah. just coaching uh, girls basketball, mm -hmm. but you have to go yeah. to the other events, football games, and all that. Football, stuff. you know, every sport. I try to be visible because I want the coaches and the, and the kids know I support their program just just as much as I support mine. You know, and the, yeah. I don't want to show favoritism right. to one program or the other. So I try to, you know, support each program and each coach to let them know that I I care about. So you're mo totally modeling the way mm -hmm. as in your leadership style, the servant leadership yes. style. Mm -hmm. I mean, the kids are at, like all your student athletes are seeing you take your academics and your athletics and put yes. together yeah. in life as a role model 
as a leader, and then you have girls on a day-to-day specifically watching you help them become, you know, better people, better student athletes, and prepare them uh, for your life, for their lives, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, um, growing up in a single-parent home, my mom taught me a lot, and I really feel that, Mm -hmm. you know, being, you know, rejected from those boys' jobs, God had a different plan for me Mm -hmm. and placed me with girls' basketball for a reason. Um, and I just use the basketball court to teach life lessons. Mm-hmm. You know, um, some of the girls are going to play in college. Some of, might even be in the pros. But the majority of the kids I coach are just going to be, you know, students in college. So I try to give them the tools and you know yeah. the, the wisdom and the knowledge to succeed once they leave the program. Because mm-hmm. um, once you're royal, you're always royal. You know, yeah. and, yeah. and we want you to do good. You know, once when you leave the program as well. And see yeah. the importance of academics at, at Vincentian Academy and in in, in what it is. Yeah. That's the other thing is juggling all of it, right? Playing yeah. for your team and the expectations you have as a coach, and yet you know how many hours they put to, to the books. Yeah, academics are, you know, it's very tough of Vincentian, but that's a good thing. A lot of our mm-hmm. kids, once they leave Vincentian, they're more prepared to go on, and they do just as well um, in college. And they go to a lot of big-time schools, Notre Dame, Princeton, you know, yeah. the, the list goes on, you know. Mm-hmm. And coaching there, you have to understand that academics come first, and, you know, and that's why you have to, you know, you change up your style a little bit. You gotta, you know, understand that when they're with you, it's almost like a study break because each night they go home, they spend so much time on yes. their homework, and you have to understand as a coach that academics come first at that school. So your your heat's in your chair has been hot when yeah. you first started because it's very cool now. Yeah, it's always so, hot. <laughs> what, what was the transition? Assistant head. What's yeah. the transition? And then take us into the success of, or the start of the success of the girls program. Um, like I said, I spent one, a year assistant coach at Ascension. Um, the head coach left. Um, so they hired me on as the head coach of Ascension. Early on, we had success. You know, we made, my first year we made it to the Whitfield Championship, which we lost in that game. But just making it there was, right. you know, our championship because right. at that time I was the third coach in four years for that group. Right. Um, so I think the biggest thing that I provided for Vincentian was stability, you right. know, because a lot exactly. of coaches saw the school as a stepping stone. I go here, do good, I can move on to another right. job. And um, and I didn't view it that way. Yeah. I just wanted to go yeah. in, kind of build a program. Um, you know, once you start winning, you know, um, you know, things happen, you know, kids yeah. start looking at your school, exactly. parents yeah. start looking at your school, you're more visible to the community, mm-hmm. you know, but before that, you, like, who, where's your ascension, mm-hmm. who, where's school, where's yeah. it at, you exactly. know, but once they see you on a, in a playoffs and a championship mm-hmm. stage, you become more visible and exactly. that, that piques people's interest. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're at the state where, you know, we're doing really good, you know, competing. Um, we made it to three state uh, championships in a row. We lost the first one. We won the last two yeah. back to back. Um, we won four Whitfield championships in a row, five in the last six years, and I yeah. think six section championships in a row. So right now, um, due to the hard work of the, the players and you know, the coaches and right. the, the administrators and the parents who have believed in our program, exactly. we're successful now. How many coach of the years? Um, from the state, I believe one. Um, from the Post Gazette, I think two or three. Oh. Yeah, I really don't. No, right. no yeah. Right. I just. It's like I, yeah, I just keep going. You know, yeah. and then once I retire, I look back over the so career. How many years has the head? Ten years. Ten, ten years of the head. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so I thought, oh, ten years there. Oh, mm-hmm. ten years the head. Okay. Yeah. So you've pulled a lot of players from St. Mary's, the oh, yeah. girls team, yeah. which is my parish in which I taught at, and my wife teaches kindergarten. Yeah. So she's taught a lot of your kids that play at Vincentian. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, get. We yeah, get, the, get the Elliott girls, my wife's taught, and uh, different people. So, yeah. So, yeah. So they're, they're, I told you there's a huge connection with Vincentian and mm-hmm. all that. And I remember the excitement of winning the state last year. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, they have a, a great program. And like I said, the Elliott girls, they're uh, two of my starters now on the team. Um, so, they're doing very well. And they help yeah. little hoopers um, on uh, Saturday mornings. Uh, I uh, coach that for my little girl who's uh-huh. in first grade. And mm-hmm. we, got, we do it. Uh, over at St. Mary's. Yeah, so, yeah, they're, they're, they're really good kids. Yeah, they are great. Yeah, yeah. So talk about some of your players that have come through. Uh, I know you have two now that are seniors that are probably heavily recruited, and mm-hmm. you have a person player over at Pitt that you can talk about. Yeah, you know, we have Brenda Wise, which, you know, is probably our biggest name to come out of Ascension um, in a long time, maybe ever for girls basketball. Yeah. Um, she's doing a great job in down at Pitt, starting in freshman uh, year, correct? Yeah, f- yeah wow. freshman year down there, playing in ACC, doing really good. 
uh, which I knew she would with her work ethic and her determination. Mm -hmm. I knew she would do a right. good job. Um, we have Ad Abby Bartoshevich, she's playing Division Three at Mountain Union. Mm -hmm. um, we have some other girls that came through the program or, you know, running track. Uh, Kayla Key, University of Hampton, she's okay. running track. Allie Bartoshevich, she's running track for the University of Maryland. Um, we even have someone playing water polo, Monty Herring, she's playing water polo. Um, so we got kids, our school's such a small school, they play multiple sports. Yeah. Yeah. So even if they don't go for basketball, um, you know, they go for other sports as right. well. And how about uh, your two seniors, Toriano specifically mm -hmm. and Maya? They're seniors today, correct? Yeah, yeah, they're seniors. What, what's their recruitment? Uh, their recruitment still, they're still open, undecided. You know, okay. um, they'll probably make a decision soon. Um, seen, seen, this year's seniors class is very talented. We already have mm -hmm. two kids that committed to a school. Um, we have three other kids um, wow. within that class that will play college basketball. Just a matter of where. So your only way you leave Incension is a college job. It sounds like I'm putting you on the spot yeah. and, 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 and smile. Yeah. Uh, and you got to get a college job. Uh, that's the uh, only way. I wouldn't say the only way. Um, yeah. I mean, who knows what the future holds, but, yeah. I mean, I like Miss Incension. I have yeah. a great situation there, so it had to be something very special. Very special to leave because yeah. you're going to be the king of yeah. there for a long time yeah. to come, for sure. And Vincentian Academy, you can find out information on you, for sure, yeah. all at Vincentian Academy's website and uh, mm -hmm. all about the program and all that. And then great success, again, to you. And uh, let's see if you can bring home another state, right? Uh, that's yeah. the goal. That's yeah. the goal. Yes, right now, are you guys, what are you ranked? Are you, uh, well, we're ranked number one in, in single A. Yeah. Um, you so know, you have a good shot. We, have, good we have a good shot, yeah, as long as we stay healthy and, you know, keep working hard. And, right. you know, that's the main thing. And uh, with this group of kids we have now, they have the experience. They know what it takes. So we just got to just take one game at a time. That's our approach, and, you know, that's what we want to do. Very humble coach. Very <laughs> that, and that's why Coach Hall brings such amazing people on. He probably looked at that guest list, and then Coach Moncrease on that list. Like, oh, wow, it's a good list of four we had uh, in the yeah. studio. Yeah. Thanks again, Coach Karen Hall, Absolutely. for setting all those up. I have one phoner today uh, for TV. But, again, it's such a great thing to see. The winning, keep it up, Coach Thank you. Moncrief, uh, Coach Karen Hall. We can't find information on you anywhere, except now I guess from all my shows, YouTube everywhere, Coach Karen will be. And then uh, we'll see next month who she lines up for us. Uh, I'm hoping Sam comes down and we have different people. And great. And then tune in Wednesdays at my website, tolter.net slash Toll Education Network, to listen noon to one to our live interviews. Yes with some really great athletes and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, superstars that are coming on the next couple weeks. So take care, guys. Thanks for watching the Neil Haley Show, and we'll see you next week with some great talk again. Take care, everyone. For those of you in Bethel Park that don't know me, I am Mr. Bold, one of the many stars here at Bethel Park TV, Channel 7. I hope that the folks in Bethel Park understand what we have here in the way of BPTV, the asset that the television station, the public television station is to the community of Bethel Park. For Mr. Bold personally, one of the things that I would like to do, and I've talked to Dave about this, is a show gearing itself towards veterans. And I would throw out an invitation to the veterans in our audience here in Bethel Park or around the South Hills. If you want to contact Dave Cable here at the station and let them know that you would be willing to share your experiences, especially the World War II veterans who were losing here at an alarming rate. And pretty soon there's not going to be many of them left. I would love to get them on TV if they would be willing and interview them.